Your Excellency, the President and Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces of the Republic of Kenya, Emilio Stanley Mwai Kibaki was born on the 15th of November 1931, the youngest of eight children from a family of subsistence farmers living in Nyeri. His intelligence and aptitude for learning manifested from a young age, and in 1947, he qualified to study at the prestigious Mangu High School in the then Kiambu district. His star continued to rise in academic circles after he was awarded a scholarship to Uganda's renowned Makerere University in 1951, where he pursued a Bachelor of Arts degree in Economics, History and Political Science. He graduated four years later with first-class honors and, whilst there, he also served as the Vice Chair of the Makerere Students Guild between 1954 to 1955. Mwai Kibaki then received a scholarship to study at the London School of Economics from 1955 to 1958, where he excelled in economics and public finance, graduating with distinction. Upon his return to East Africa, Kibaki then served his alma mater, Makerere University, as an assistant lecturer in the Department of Economics from 1958 to 1960. In 1960, Kibaki left Makerere University and joined the Kenya African National Union, KANU, a party that was leading the political struggle for independence. After Kenya gained independence in 1963, Kibaki was elected Member of Parliament for Donholm constituency, now Makadara, in Nairobi County. His political career went a notch higher in 1965, when he was appointed Minister of Commerce and Industry, and he later served the Ministry of Finance between 1969 and 1982. His economics background had prepared him to navigate the complex docket. <laughs> kwamba nitaihifadhi nitailinda na kutetea katiba ya Kenya kwa mujibu wa sheria iliyowekwa ewe Mwenyezi Mungu usaidie Mwai Kibaki was appointed vice president when Daniel Toroiti Charab Moi rose to the presidency upon the death of Jomo Kenyatta in 1978 in Moi's cabinet he was initially entrusted with a finance portfolio but Kibaki increasingly found himself at odds with President Daniel Arab Moy, and in 1988 he was replaced as the vice president by Josphat Karanja and transferred to the Ministry of Health. No reason was given for his dismissal. During this time, the struggle for multi party democracy was at its peak. Amid internal and external pressure, Section 2A of the Constitution was repealed by President Moi and Kanu in early December 1991. On Christmas Day the same year, Moi Kibaki resigned as Minister of Health and a member of Kanu Party. Alongside veteran politicians the late Jenga Karume and the late John Keane, Kibaki founded the Democratic Party, DP, at John Keane's home in Karen. He unsuccessfully contested the presidency in 1992 and 1997, losing to incumbent President Moi. In 1998, he became the official leader of the opposition, a position that placed him in a strategic spot in the race to succeed President Moi, who was set to retire in 2002. But Kibaki's quest in 2002 began on a weekend note, as President Moi began the first quarter of the election year with a hugely consequential merger between his party, Kanu, and NDP, the party of his newfound, albeit most unlikely ally, Raila Odinga. The KANU-NDP merger not only strengthened KANU's control of parliament, but also placed the party way ahead of the opposition in the game of numbers.
In September 2002, Mwai Kibaki joined hands with Ford Kenya and the National Party to form the National Alliance Party of Kenya, NAC, with Kibaki as its presidential candidate. But the shot in the arm for Kibaki's career came in October 2002, when the ruling party Kanu disintegrated over the choice of political greenhorn Uhuru Kenyatta as presidential candidate. The rebels from Kanu that included Kanu Secretary General Raila Odinga, former Vice President George Saitoti, former ministers Kalonzo Musioka and William Timama, who joined the Kibaki side in forming the National Rainbow Coalition, NAC. At a massive rally in Nairobi's Uhuru Park on the 14th of October 2002, Raila Odinga asked an impulsive question that amounted to a premature yet decisive endorsement of Mwai Kibaki for president. The endorsement angered other presidential aspirants in the newly formed coalition, but seemingly it was too late to stop the rainbow wave. The coalition brought together Kibaki's NAC and Raila Odinga's Liberal Democratic Party LDP. A few weeks before the election, tragedy struck as Kibaki was involved in a car accident and suffered serious injuries. With Kibaki confined to a wheelchair, Raila Odinga rallied the Rainbow Coalition through weeks of a highly energized and widely resonating campaign that ended in the landslide election of Mwai Kibaki as Kenya's third president since independence. Figures do give indication that Honorable Mwai Kibaki is ahead of the next presidential candidate, that is Honorable Huru Kinyata, by a very wide margin. It is not likely that the margin can be eliminated. He has therefore professionally satisfied the criteria upon which a presidential candidate must be declared elected. The Electoral Commission therefore declares Honorable Mwai Kibaki the President of Kenya. Mwai Kibaki, na hapa kwamba, nitatenda kazi zangu. Sworn in on a wheelchair, President Mwai Kibaki and his team moved with haste to begin to implement some of their election pledges that they had made, including reviving the economy and tackling rampant corruption, especially in the public service. Significant economic changes were implemented by President Mwai Kibaki during his first term as president. However, the endemic corruption that he had promised to fight during his election campaign remained rampant. Although he established anti-corruption courts, his attempts to pass anti-corruption bills were largely unsuccessful. Kibaki's government also suffered from wrangles arising from the failure to implement the pre-election power-sharing memorandum of understanding, MOU, between NAC and LDP. Tension over the MOU increased as lawmakers struggled to draft a new constitution, which Kibaki had promised during his campaign. Disagreements concerning reforms, especially the creation of the post of prime minister, further divided NAC and delayed the enactment of a new constitution, leading to public unrest. Mega corruption reared its ugly head in 2005, with members of Kibaki's administration implicated in the 50 billion Kenya shillings Anglo leasing scandal, where 18 security related contracts were awarded to companies that did not render services or deliver goods paid for. A new constitution, backed by Kibaki, was finally put to the test in a referendum in November 2005, but it was rejected by voters. In what was widely viewed as a contest between the MOU opposites, that is Kibaki's NAC and Raila's LDP, Kibaki responded to this referendum threat by dissolving the cabinet and kicking out Raila Odinga and his allies in the newly constituted cabinet. Kibaki also reached out to Kanu, the party he defeated in 2002. He named in his new cabinet Kanu Chair Uhuru Kenyatta, Ford People Leader and former Kanu diehard Simeon Nyachai, amongst others. 
Before the dust had settled on that referendum loss, Kibaki was confronted by the reality of an election loss in the upcoming 2007 election. He quickly formed a new party, the Party of National Unity, PNU, to face Raila Odinga's Orange Democratic Movement, ODM. The election process started off peacefully, but a delay in the release of the final election results saw the building up of tensions, with Electoral Commission Chair Samuel Kivoito wondering on national TV whether his officials were cooking election results. We can't get our officers, you know, I don't know. So, I don't know where they are. And so, no, we have asked, listen, we have asked the police to assist us to trace these people. If it is impossible, if it is impossible for me to carry on my work, I can go home. Yeah. I'll go home if I am... Raila Odinga's two-day lead in the results tally was wiped overnight and Kibaki was declared winner under controversial circumstances. 8,624. This means Honorable Moi Kibaki is the winner. The commission therefore declares Honorable Moi Kibaki as the president of Kenya. A nightfall swearing in ceremony followed shortly at State House, Nairobi. Odinga and his allies immediately disputed the outcome. Mimi Mwai Kibaki na hapa kwamba nitatenda kazi zangu za urais kwa Jamhuri ya Kenya. With international observers questioning the validity of the final results. Widespread protests ensued throughout the country and degenerated into horrific acts of violence, which eventually led to the loss of life of more than 1,000 people, and more than 600,000 were displaced in the election's violent aftermath. Frantic efforts to resolve the political impasse between Kibaki and Odinga were not immediately successful, exacerbating the situation. The late former UN Secretary General Kofi Annan arrived in Kenya about a month after the election and successfully brought the two sides to the negotiating table. On February 28, 2008, Kibaki and Odinga signed a power sharing agreement called the National Accord and Reconciliation Act 2008, which established the office of the Prime Minister and created a coalition government. Two years later, a new constitution was approved by 67% of Kenyan voters and promulgated on the 27th of August, 2010. We'll now wave it to all of us as the fanfare is being played. Mwai Kibaki served the remainder of his term balancing the complexities of a coalition government with the pressure of solidifying his legacy after a hectic 10-year rule. The former president is credited with establishing free primary education, revamping the country's infrastructure, investment in the criminal justice system, spurring a real estate boom, and increasing the immunization coverage for children against several diseases. On the 6th of April 2013, Mwai Kibaki handed over to President-elect Uhuru Kenyatta and Deputy President-elect William Ruto at the Moi International Sports Center Kasarani. At that time, the Kenyan economy was growing at 7.1%, with national debt under 2 trillion Kenya shillings. President Kibaki was married to Lucy Modoni from 1961 until her death in 2016 at the age of 80 years. They had four children, namely Judy Wanjiko, Jimmy Kibaki, David Kagai and Tony Githinji, and numerous grandchildren. In 2004, there were media reports that Kibaki has a second spouse, whom he allegedly married under customary law, Mary Wamboy, and a daughter, Wangoi Mwai. I want to make it very clear that I have only one dear wife, Lucy, who is here. And if the wrong continues, tell the truth, not lies. Right. I've been partners, the president did not say that. We have been tormenting us. I don't know what to get out of it. 
State House, in response, released an unsigned statement that Kibaki's only immediate family at the time was his then wife Lucy and their four children. Retired President Mwai Kibaki and his family kept a low profile after 2013, with Kibaki giving his maiden public speech in December at the University of Nairobi. After that, not much was seen of the former president, who would make rare public appearances at funerals and state functions. On the 21st of October 2016, Kibaki was taken to the current hospital for treatment and later flown to South Africa for specialized treatment. In June 2020, Kibaki's private secretary, Ngari Gituku, told the media that Kibaki would have regular checkups at the Nairobi hospital. But contrary to some media reports, the former president had not been admitted. Wahiga Mwaura, Citizen TV.